Hey guys, so today was the fifth day of the Cryptic Clue Fest, and if you didn't know that, it's the last day. Hence, now you can do all the clues in one go and get all the rewards that you want to get. So I'm not sure how long this is going to be in game, and I suspect until the next game update, or possibly, or possibly the rest of the month. I'm not sure how long they normally stay in game, but it'll be at least a week after this guide, I assume. Anyway, so this is a guide on the Cryptic Clue Fest where I'm basically going to give you the quick answers of how to do them. Like all the answers, all the solutions, and I also try and explain to the best of my ability why they are the answers if you're interested in the riddle side of it. But also, I will show you the reward, which is a diamond crown and a diamond scepter. But by doing this, you will also re um, receive the rewards from the previous years of the Cryptic Clue Fest. So if you didn't, if you didn't do it last year or the year before, then doing it this year, you will unlock them rewards too. So let's just get into the guide. <clears throat> right, guys. So moving on to the forum thread, which gives you all the clues for this. You start with a letter, which pretty much sums up that there's a lot of problems with the um, Jubilee coming up and the need you to help get some items. So it basically sums up what you've got to do and it says each clue you're going to have to find some payment items and you're going to also have to find the contact and what you, who you have to talk to basically give the items. So for the first day all you do is talk to SJ to start it. She'll be talking about panic with all the items and the need some items. And then you use the forums, she tells you to go to the official RuneScape forums and you'll basically get the items from the first clue. So if you go back to the first clue, which is on here, you scroll down to day one, and it's got three paragraphs. Now each paragraph refers to one item, and hence you require three items for this. Now however, before I give you the solutions, I'm going to show you the three items. Now this is a Team 26 cape, a pink afro, and a beer. Now you can see all the items in the invent. So to, if you want to just get all the items ready, which I recommend you do for this guide, I just recommend buying a Team 26 cape, pink afro and a beer. Now to get the pink afro you must buy it from the Falador party room, it's not purchasable on the GE. The same with the 20, Team 26 cape, you can just buy it on the GE or from Richard who is in Edgeville regardless, so it's re really close anyway. For the second contact you need a mithril arrow, a soft clay and a chisel. For the third day you need an onion, a spade, a leather glove and an earth rune. For the fourth day you need a meat pizza, ten body runes and a cabbage. And for the last day you need cake, hard leather body and some ashes. They're the only items you need and the rest you'll get during the um, Cryptic Clue Fest. So to go back to the first clue, so I can sum up why this is the answer, again we've got the um, Cockney rhyming slang which is basically something that's spoken in London quite a lot and I imagine anyone who isn't English would probably find this quite difficult to solve. Anyway, basically what it means is Law of a duck, I'm on me lonesome because basically the italic words are ones that are the rhyming slang. So basically what London rhyming slang does, it changes words for something that rhymes with it. I have no idea why, but... Lola of a duck, I'm on me lonesome to find me way to Edgeville to hop across the world worldly wall. Before I go, I'll buy a nice blue cape from Dick. Now, Dick is basically a nickname for Richard, and hence you talk to Richard in Edgeville who sells the capes, and it says a blue cape, and the only blue cape he sells is the Team 26 cape, so you want to buy that. Hope I don't end up brown bread, which means dead. Second paragraph. Gordon Bennett, I was standing in Falador in my favourite barbers of... No, wait. I was standing in the barber in my favourite... I'm not sure what this... In my favourite town of Falador, that's it. I was standing in the barber in my favourite town of Falador. I fancied a dance, so I decided to visit Party Pete, and he gave me a pink afro. That's pretty much what it means. A pink brush and go, and after a round of go. So I think that's a pretty dodgy one, that rhyme there. But the last one, Lord Above. While on my travels, I ended up in Ports of Rim, where I found a, where I found a great pub where you can get a free beer on the table. Enough said. So if you go to Ports of Rim, there's a pub, and the beer's just on the table ready to take, as it mentions there. So there are three items. You want the blue cape, Team 26 cape, you want your pink afro, and the um, last item, the beer. So what do you got these items? You want to talk to SJ here? Oh, well, thank goodness you have the items. I do indeed. Spam through the chat. Blah, blah, blah. And she gives you a basket. And you need the contact clue. Right, and now she says, now this is where you get your contact clues of who to talk to. This all works out as you get these ones in game. So you've got to talk to your last contact to get these. Now the first one is obviously from SJ. And she gives white star and blue shield. They house the building you must visit. A furnace to the west, a range to the east. A, a cost the officer there in for a minute. So obviously white star and blue shield, so if you go to um, home, home teleport, it would help if I unlocked it. But if you have unlocked it, you will have the blue the blue shield of a white star. And now you're probably wondering why am I on this account? That's simply because you'll find out next week. 
But anyway, yeah, so you want to head to Falador. Right, so once you're at Falador, noting the clue, it says between the between the furnace and the um, range. So this is the building right here, the housing stage, and she, and it, she on the right talking to an officer. So you talk to this permit officer here, and just spam through the chat, and you will give her the free, free items, and she will fill up your basket. So you just keep on spamming through the chat, there's a lot of chat, and then she gives you the clue for the next day. So, if you skip through a bit more, you'll see it. Eventually she'll give you it. Um, here we go. Combestibles sold upon the shelves, a slammer and jetty nearby. Talk to the owner and don't be a moaner and the item C will surely supply. So obviously it's a riddle and it's referring to a shop quite clearly because he's on about selling items on shelves. And now if you don't know the word combestibles, it's basically like another word for food, which basically hints that it's a food shop. And then it mentions a jetty, which is like a port. So basically like a jetty is like the big, the big wooden planks, you know, going out. That's what I mean. So now you basically you want your next three items, which is your mithril arrow, your soft clay, and your chisel. So if I go to clue two, which is here, now there's three items. That quite clearly states item one, item two, item three. Now it's basically a riddle for each one. So as you can see, on the bush nearby, the items traces of an avian species. If you don't know what avian means, it means bird. So hence the chicken, where you get the feathers. And now it says whilst rummaging on the ground nearby, I caught a splinter. So talking about wood from the from like a tree and it means like an arrow shaft and the third one is basically some items definitely been seen some youth and been weathered so hence you've actually done something with it and a bluish rust was found at the scene of hiding so you found some bluish rust and you see and you've given it some youth and, be, and it's been weathered hence it's like mithril and that is basically when you join all that three items together you will make a mithril arrow the next one is on about some hidden out by some Saradome and statue east of Varrock and it's just talking about soft clay I'm not 100% sure why on this one, but it's this part gives it away more. Part of the item got left behind was a solid substance, and it had turned a colour cross between brown and orange. So if you look at clear, it's kind of like orangey-brown, like clear is, and it, is, it wasn't solid anymore, kind of thing. Anyway, item three is down in the rimming and onion field. This was The item was found, then removed again. Expensive gemstone dust was found, so hence it's not about how you turn gems to dust kind of thing. And then, if you go to the last part, it talks about crafty devil has covered the tracks of this item. I can't find anything other than the dust and the uprooted onion. So he's on about crafting as well. So it gives a, a few hints at chisel, but again, I'm not 100% sure why. Some of the riddles are a bit misleading and don't make too much sense, but it is a chisel. And for these, you obviously you want to head to Port Sarim Food Shop. So once you get to Port Sarim, you want to head to the food shop. Right, so I've just arrived at Port Sarim, from running south from Falador. And you just want to run south as you, I would say I'm looking at loads of songs here. Holy shit, what a beast I am. Anyway, so we want to run at the food shop which is at the southern end of Port Slim and oh my god, my run has run out. That is never good. It's just past the fishing shop and you'll arrive at the food shop. You know, you want to talk to Wyden, or however you say that, Wyden, Wyden, I don't know. And you just talk to him and you will give him the free items and get the next contact clue. The so whole space bar, just like before skip through all the chat, it's quite long. Um, prop proprietor of Ascending Soul, a house for making merry, she'll say you a stout, but she'll give you a shout if it turns out you're short of a penny. So basically, it's not about, she'll sell you a stout, and she'll give you a shout if it turns out, right, so basically it's she's selling beer, or stout, or something like that, and a house for making merry, which is referring to like a pub, and proprietor of Ascending Soul, not too sure what that, that's on about, but it is referring to the pub in Falador. And so basically you want to head back to Falador, and this time you want to have your onion, your spade, your leather gloves, and your earth rune. Right, so I've just figured out why it is the clue in this bar in particular, and it says it's the Rising Sun Tavern, this bar, if you right click this banner here and examine it. And you can see obviously there's a sun on there, which gives you a hint that it's this one. So you want to talk to Emily, the person behind the bar, and give her the items. Now, before I finish that off, I'm going to show you the clue. Now, this clue was just a simple map, and as you can see, if you've ever been in London or lived in any metro system, you'll be used to this kind of thing, and it looks like a sort of train map. Now, as you can see, they're all labelled, 
And if you look at the labels on the red line in particular, you can see dual, dual, which refers to like the Deuterina, and maze, which I assume refers to like Melzor's maze. Then it goes north, like past the guild, which I assume means the crafting guild, the barbers in Falador, the anvils north of Falador, and then the gnome village. So as you can see, it's like back to front. Now, because obviously that's the northwest, and that is the far east. So if you if you flip this west, if you flip this twice, and then you can place it on top of the world map and it will refer, refer to four locations. Now these four locations are given by the black dots. Now if you go to all these black dots, you'll get the four items required, which happen to spawn there. The onion from the onion farm, spade from Falador, in the actual the estate agent's house, which we've actually just been to, leather gloves from Lumberwood Swamp, and earth runes from north of the GE. These are the four items, and they happen to spawn where them black spots are, so it's very simple, very easy. That, that map was actually quite difficult. It took a lot of people a long time to work out. So anyway, you want to talk to Emily, as I've just said, and give her the items. So he'll again, then give you the next contact clue and he says, a man who deals in quality cloths, a person who, whom you can barter. If you can handle the sand, just try your hand and see what he's got to offer or what you're after. So obviously it's talking about like a market stall because it's not about bartering and a man who deals in quality cloths which refers to like silk and it's sand as in Alcarid. So if you want to head to uh, if you want to head to Alcarid with your next three items which is a meat pizza, ten body runes and cabbage. So once you're out well career with your free items, you want to talk to the silk trader and give him the items. Now, the solution to the clue, if I go back to the clue page, you'll go to D4. Now this is a murder scene. It's basically what it is. Mud Timber gives it's at his mansion and you've got six guests. You've got Nomad, Nex, Lucian, Wise Old Man, Lord Draken, and the Bank Clerk. And then it tells you about their favourite items, which obviously gives hints at the solutions, because we already know the solutions are ten body runes, meat pizza, and a cabbage. So yeah, then you've got the murder scene and you've got lots of different rooms. So first obviously you've got the kitchen and if you put your mouse over it there's a few links. Now if you click that it'll give you a bit of information so it says three pans look out of place as if disturbed by someone rushing for the kitchen with a large object. So basically it's just a load of clues towards the, who did the murder and it basically says there's three people left alive and they're the three people who have the correct items I assume. However I never solved this one because Jagex are silly enough if you take all six items it'll automatically take the correct free. So I just took all six items, I found the correct free that you there. So you just want to talk to him and he'll take the items and he'll give you the next supplier and he says of green complexion and a rather hooked nose she has a curious smile she can mix your potion without a commotion but her bubbling broth smells quite vile. So it's referring to a witch quite obviously and she's on about mixing a potion. Now if you remember the noob quest of witch's potion now I think that got removed didn't it? Yeah, I think it got removed as a quest, however, it still exists as a mini quest. So obviously that's talking about the one in Remington, the witch there with the hooked nose, and obviously green like a witch. So after you finish that chat, then you want to go to Remington with these three items, your cake, your hard leather body, and your ashes. So once you arrive at Remington, you want to head to this house here with Hetty in it, and I'm going to show you the solutions to the riddle I'll explain. And you've got three clues of jobs as he refers to the three items. The first one is referring to a cake. Now, this is simply because it has three little sentences, each of the, as it all of them do, and the end of the sentence has a little bracket with numbers in it. Now, the numbers refers to the letters in the answer. Now, this one refers to egg, and if you search Robert from 802 AD in Google, you will find out that it's like Robert Egbert or something like that, and that obviously gives it away, and it's all about offspring, which hence names egg. The second one is on about flour. It's on about milling, which gives the hint that flour, and that's obviously five letters. The last one is drink fit for a thousand empress of England who is missing Mad Matt but has the key. So obviously you've got Mod Matt here who helped do this, and it's referring how milk has not Mod Matt in it, but it has the key at the end. So that one's milk, and if you put an egg, flour, and milk together, you get a cake. Now the second clue refers to the hard leather body. Now if you look at this, it's all about stitching up. I assume it means thread or needle. The second one I assume means needle or thread, but I'm not sure. I think I think this one's on about the needle because it's on about a point, like a needle, and the needle and thread are both six letters. The last one is on about hard leather. Again, I'm not too sure on this one why that's hard leather, but it's two words and hard leather fits. And now if you use a needle on hard leather with thread, you will get a hard leather body. There is nothing else you can make, so you can't make a hard leather chap, so there's no reason to distinguish between a body and chaps with that clue. So that's why you get the cake and the hard leather body. Now, going to the last clue, you get ashes. Now, I'm not too sure on the last word. Now, the first one I think is log. You've got a bit of wooden, which refers to log. The next one's on about fire making, and I see it's tinderbox, it's nine letters. 
and so it's tinderbox and the last one I'm seeing I'm not too sure because I know the solutions but um, ashes and I think the six letter word I'm not sure because they'll all mean items in game but the six letter word might mean like burned or something like that but obviously if you've got a log your tinderbox and it finishes burning you'll get ashes so there are your three solutions and you want to talk to Hetty give her the items and she won't give you a contact clue because this is the last one even though you ask for one so I just hurry up and give you it and she'll put all the items in your basket it's all set ready for the jubilee and once it shuts up you can go back to Varrock and you want to talk to SG right so I've arrived back at Varrock Center and you've got SG here now if you talk to her she'll be even much be out about yep all happy grateful talk to Big Ben is what she says but however before that you do get the cutscene with the Queen arriving at Varrock so if you didn't know it is the Diamond Jubilee at the minute in England and the Basically, it means 60 years of the queen, of the, having this queen. And this is a comedic act with the guards in the background, like, he was panicking and nearly dropped these little staff thing. You never actually see the queen, it's pretty disappointing. The cutscene's pretty cool, but they put a lot of time into this, actually. They have put an awful lot of time in it. The thing is, you don't even get horses in RuneScape, and there's horses there. And then you see that character, you've seen all, a lot of the images of this in the um, teaser images. And not, if you didn't do the Cryptic Clue Fest, you don't actually get to see this at all. You've got the Queen there waving her hand, that's what she actually does if you've never seen it in an actual TV. And you've got all the signature heroes standing here, all looks pretty cool. It's a pretty good cutscene, I mean, the, putting, the cutscenes have definitely improved. If you go back to early quests that you've ever done, the cutscenes are all pretty crap. And you go to later cutscenes, they all look awesome. And then you've got some flying dragons here, and that really looks good, I think. I really, I was pretty impressed with them dragons flying over. And anyway, you, you, after that, you talk to SG again, and she said, I'm a big thanks, talk to Big Ben. So after she shuts up, finish up pressing spacebar and spamming it with your finger. Finally shuts up and then talk to Big Ben. He will give you these two rewards, which is the diamond scepter and the diamond crown. And they also tell you you can get the last clip to clue rewards. Um, he didn't tell me, did he? Well, I just did it on Fairy Tales on my other account, on Fairy Tales, obviously. And it said you can collect the last rewards from Lumbridge or Clan Citadel. For some reason they haven't told me. So I think it's only if you're a member, do you, or if only if you've played long enough during the Cryptic Clay Fest, maybe? I'm not sure, but to get them rewards, you want to head to the Clan Citadel and talk to Avalani or something. Or you want to head to Lumbridge, and I think it's Roddick or something like that. And they all give you the previous rewards if you need to collect them. So that's quite self-explanatory. If you tell the clan Citadel if you vex them, it will be it, the person is literally right next to you, and that's how I got mine. So anyway, guys, I hope you find this guide helpful. And if you want to have a look at these items, I think they look pretty cool. You can see what they look like. It does look pretty awesome. Anyway, yeah, guys, thanks for watching. I hope you find this guide helpful, and I hope you find the solutions to the riddles pretty interesting. And guys, I'll see you tomorrow for another video.